Okay, in this tutorial, just for fun, I'm going to demonstrate using a publicly available module that's written by somebody else. This is just to demonstrate what it takes to use a module that somebody else has given. If the previous video has not driven the point home already, this should clarify and clear any doubts. So I have this website that I frequently use for picking up some open source and uh, pretty cool modules called ngmodules.org. A lot of these modules are really cool and some of them are a little bit more involved in that it takes a lot of uh, uh, setup to do, but there are some which are pretty handy. And the one that I want to try today is something called ng tags input. So this is a module, let's go to the home page over here, that has this tag UI. Okay, you can create this tag UI pretty quickly in uh, Angular. I'm going to go to the demos page where it shows how to actually create the tag input. Uh, this is a pretty handy um, plunker snippet as well. So what I would need to do to use this module, there are a couple of steps. First, I need to get the JavaScript file. So apparently this, let me expand this. So apparently this JavaScript file is available on the CDN and here is the script tag for it. So I'm just going to copy that over and uh, use that in index.html. I'm going to put this above the app.js. So I'm basically linking to the ng tags JavaScript file. Second, I'm going to need to declare that as a dependent module. So apparently the name of the module is ng tags input. So what I'm going to do is go to my app.js and when I'm creating the module, I declare this as a dependency. There you go. ng tags input is now a dependent module. Now that I have declared it as a dependency, I can use the directive that comes with it. Apparently there is a directive called tags input, which has an ng model, which should point to a tags property. A tags is apparently just an array of strings. So I'm just going to copy this over to my controller. I'm going to have to create a controller over here, app.controller. Let me call it tags demo CTRL. And in my function tags demo CTRL, I'm going to copy this. Since we are using controller as, I'm going to say this dot tags is, I'm going to change the name over here just to make sure it's picking what we have supplied to it. Test three. All right, so these are some tag objects. Now I can use that in my HTML. I'm gonna link to this controller rather than the one that we have over there. And inside this div, I'm going to use this. Tags input is the directive that the component has exposed with an ng model pointing to ctrl.tags, right? So I have ctrl.tags, which is going to contain this. This is what's going to drive the tags input directive to do its thing. Again, tags input is not a directive that comes out of the box with Angular. It has been given to us thanks to this ng tags script and now it is made available in our phone book, in our module, by adding that as a dependency over here. By adding this module dependency, I'm pulling in the directive that has been registered with this, and I'm using the directive using tags input. Now, let's refresh the page and see if this works. So there you go, we can see the tags, but the styling doesn't look right. Maybe there is a CSS file to be linked. Yes, there is. There is a CSS over here, which I'm going to link as well to make the tags look like tags. I'm going to add that to my HTML. Save and reload. This is much better. Now they actually look like tags. They also have this functionality where you can click and close it. I can add new tags by typing stuff and clicking and pressing enter, they all form new tags over here. And I'm assuming they back the model, which is 
the tags array. And as you add new tags, I wouldn't be surprised if it adds these objects to the model. The tag component itself is not important. You don't have to worry too much about how the tag input directive works. What's important to note is that we were able to add new functionality to our Angular application by importing a module. We imported the JavaScript file and had the module that comes with the JavaScript file be a dependent module to what we have. And just by doing this, anything that was registered in this module becomes available to us in our HTML, like this tag input directive. Now we can actually look at this JavaScript file to see what's going on. Uh, this is, I'm guessing, minified JavaScript, so it'll not be very visible, but uh, it's fair to say that this JavaScript file has an angular.module where you have the module defined with an empty array. They don't have a dependency, but this is what creates the module that we are using over here. Right? So I hope that kind of helped to make you understand what the modules are and how to use them. See you in the next tutorial where we're going to start an exercise. Uh, as promised, we're going to be building a to-do app from the scratch.